Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Tim Red. Uh, we want to uh, welcome you here to another edition of Pastor Speaks. Uh, as I said, my name is Pastor Tim Red. I am the young adult pastor here in Quincy, Illinois at the amazing Cathedral of Worship. And I'm so excited and uh, glad that God has given us another opportunity to be here on WTJR and CTN. Uh, we want to thank uh, Sister Donette and the whole team here at WTJR uh, for all that they do uh, here in this community and throughout the whole entire world. Uh, today, I truly believe that I have a word from God for all of us, and I'm excited, hallelujah, about what God and the Holy Ghost is getting ready to do. If you would turn with me in the book of Luke chapter 2, uh, we're going to look at the verses 41 through 49, and I believe that this is a relevant word that all of us could take a part of and um, begin to assess our own lives as well as those that's around us and, and encourage them uh, to do what God is getting ready to uh, instruct us to do. So we're looking at Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 41 through 49. And the Bible says, people of God, now his parents, Jesus' parents, went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was, when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they had found him not, uh, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Amen. I want to draw your attention, people of God, to verse 43, and then we'll expound upon the word of God. It says, and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. Um, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. I want to talk to you for the next few moments from the title, We Left Something. Amen. We left something. Uh, I believe that we are at an age and a time in our lives where things are getting better. Uh, we're making more income. Most of us are working two full-time jobs to pay the mortgage and to pay the, the car note. And, uh, and, and we're, we're having a, a, a high time in life. We're taking trips. We're, we're taking cruises. And, and things are looking good. Where our bodies are getting better. We're, we're more healthy. Um, and, and I believe that we in the church or, or even believers that are not going to church. Uh, we're doing things good uh, outwardly, but I believe that we're leaving or we left something inwardly. And I believe that is our commitment uh, to God. Um, when we are looking at this story, we see that the, the Joseph, the mother and father of Jesus, Joseph and Mary has left Jerusalem, hallelujah, and they left something very important, which is Jesus. I'm concerned, people of God, that we are leaving church, amen, or we're leaving um, so many areas uh, without Christ. We're, we're living a life but do not have a personal relationship anymore. We've lost our praise, we've lost our worship, we've lost our dedication, uh, we've lost our ministries, and yet we think that things are good. Uh, there, there was a movie out back in 1990 when it was released. It was called Home Alone. And in Home Alone, there was uh, this actor named Macaulay Culkin who played Kevin McAllister, uh, eight year old boy who was, watched this, mistakenly left behind when his family was going on a family trip, family vacation to Paris. And in this uh, movie, uh, he's mistakenly forgotten, accidentally forgotten, but everybody had their baggage, amen. They had their tickets, they had their food, they had their drinks, but they lost or forgot a very vital part which was their son. Amen. They lost a family member and going on a family vacation. People of God, I believe that we are at a place in our lives, amen, where we decided to get in the family of God, but now we have forgotten the most vital part of the family, which is the son of God. Amen. Now, in this movie, uh, the, the, the uh, mother of uh, uh, Kevin McAllister, she doesn't realize that she left something or left her son until she's flying high 
in the sky. And I believe that we have gotten so high in life, glory be to God, and forgot that we left something on the ground. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? I'm saying that Jesus is the foundation. Jesus is the reason why you are flying high. And we are now making $100,000 a year, but we forgot the foundation. We are now are married. You was praying for a husband. You was praying for a wife. And you prayed for 10 years and you got it. And once you got it, you flew high, but forgot that Jesus was the foundation that got you where you were. Today, I want to let you know that I believe that we have left something. We have left something of significance. And that's why when we are flying high, things begin to start rattling and things are not as good as you thought it was supposed to be. And the reason why is because you flew high, but didn't take the person Jesus with you. You got the, the, the promotion, but you didn't take your relationship with God with you. You, you got the marriage. You, you got the education, but you forgot the most important thing. And that is the thing that got you where you was praying to be at. And that is Jesus Christ. And what I am submitting to you today is that it is time for us to get back down on our knees. It's time for us to get back to the foundation, which is a relationship with Jesus Christ, which is our prayer life, which is our worship, which is our praise. And tell God, thank you that you are the one. I'm realizing that without you, I would not have made it. If it wasn't with you, I would not be in my right mind. If it wasn't for you, I would not have received the college education. If it wasn't for you, I would not have received the loan. If it wasn't for you, I would not be married and happily married. And I'm starting to see things shake. And the reason why is because I forgot that you were supposed to be my foundation. You are supposed to be the center of my joy. You said, Jesus, and if, if I keep my mind stayed on you, then I will have perfect peace. And the reason why I'm not having peace is because I forgot something while I was flying high. I want to let somebody know that it's time to humble ourselves. Jesus said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face, call it hallelujah, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm submitting unto us, people of God, that we cannot get so drunk in success that we forgot the, the one who gave us the wine. We got, my God, we, we, can't, we can't get so filled up uh, with, with, with success that, that we forget the one who gave us the bread my God I'm saying that it's time to realize here it is that we left something uh, we are looking uh, all around in our churches and wondering why the attendance is so low and the reason why people of God is because we left something my God uh, people now are saying that they don't have to go to church uh, there is no reason to go to church and so I want to talk to you about why we go to church <laughs> hallelujah because in verse 41 and 42 it says that his parents went to Jerusalem. The, the word Jerusalem means the holy land. It, it is the holy place. Glory be to God. And this is something that they did, watch this, every year. My God. It means that this was a ritual. This, this was a habit. There was, this was something that, that they didn't question, are we going to go? My God. The Bible says over in Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not, I wish, my God, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. My God. It, it's saying that we ought to all come in corporate worship and praise God with him uh, with each other. The Bible says let us praise him in his sanctuary. My God. Uh, in the firmament of his power. Not only in your home. Not only in your shower. Not only in your bedroom. Not only in your living room. But he says praise me in my sanctuary. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody that it is important that we come together and worship God. And so they did this in verse 41. I'm going every year at the feast of the Passover. Can I tell you what the feast of the Passover over was for, it was for a time of reflection. The reason why I go to church, watch this, is not just to sh jump and shout, but can I tell you what makes me jump and shout? The reason that why I jump and shout is because I have a time, here it is, a reflection. My God, the Bible says, I, I feel like preaching this thing, Psalms 124, it says 1 and 2, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, can I tell you the reason why you ought to go to church? It's because you can remember, you can think back over your life and say that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, that the wind that blew would have took me out. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, the cancer would have took me out. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, when my child died, I would 
not have recovered if it had not been for the Lord on my side. When I couldn't pay the mortgage, I would have been kicked out if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I would have given up hope. I would have given up joy. But Jesus came in, my God, right on time. And so I go to church to reflect what he's done for me. Uh, this was not just a time of reflection for what God did for them. Here it is. But it was a reflection on what he did for those that came before them. Uh, you realize that this is about when uh, the, the death angel came and the death angel passed uh, the doorpost that had the blood. Jesus. And so all of the firstborn in Egypt uh, died. But those that were of the children of Israel uh, were safe because they had the blood. Glory be to God. Is there anybody in there in TV land that can just say thank you Jesus for the blood, my God? Because when I think about all that you've done for me and then watch this, all the things that I've done, hallelujah, that should have disqualified me from your grace and your mercy. I know that it was just the blood, hallelujah, that kept me. It was the blood that kept me when the car crash should have took my life. It was the blood. And so they were reflecting on it and they would come into the holy place, hallelujah, and worship God and worship him in spirit and in truth. And so it was a feast of reflection, it was a feast, a feast of thanksgiving. And some of you guys remember the song. Uh, it was a gospel song, and it says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. Here it is. I've got a testimony. Uh, can I tell you that somebody, here it is, is waiting for your testimony. My God. Somebody, hallelujah, in church needs to hear how you got through with Jesus. Somebody needs to hear because you don't know what somebody else is facing. Hallelujah. And so I go to church to be an encouragement to somebody else. I, I don't get saved and stay at home, but I get saved and I go out into the community to help, to feed the hungry. Hallelujah. To, to give clothes to those that are naked. I, I, I go to, 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 to the community and then I come to church to be a blessing to somebody else. And so that's why I come to church is to reflect and to give thanks. To, to reflect and to give thanks. The problem is, in this story, is that Mary and Joseph was in too much of a hurry to leave the holy place. God, uh, can I tell you, people of God, don't be in such a rush to leave the presence of God. Because the Bible says that as they were leaving, Jesus tarried. God, uh, Jesus tarried. And the word tarried means to linger in expectation. It means, God, to wait for it, my God. And I want to encourage somebody today that God is asking you, here it is, to tarry a little while longer. Glory be to God. Stay in my presence a little while longer. Uh, because the only reason why you are not capturing what I want to manifest is because you keep leaving before I open up the gifts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you keep on leaving before it's time for me to give you what I had already planned to give you. My God. And so what I'm saying is that we must stay in the presence of God long enough to receive what he has for us. Jesus tarried in Jerusalem and he is at the age of 12. He's not even at the age of maturity because in Jewish tradition a young boy doesn't become uh, obligated to follow Jewish law until they become 13. He was 12 years old and ready. Glory be to God to obey the will of God for his life. Can I tell you that Jesus was ahead of the curve? Can I tell somebody, my God, God wants you to be ahead of the curve. Glory be to God. He wants you to be at least a year ahead of time. And Jesus, watch this, at 12 years old, didn't wait until another year before he decided to follow his purpose. My God, but he said, I already got it. I understand the purpose and the will of God for my life. So I'm going to stay in the presence of God so that whatever is inside of me can come out. Can I tell you, we are waiting too long, hallelujah, to get in the purpose of God. Watch this. They walked away, but Jesus stayed. And where Jesus stayed was where the answers were. 
The Bible says that he was speaking, asking questions, and giving answers to the doctors. These are, these are theologians, uh, Bible scholars. And the Bible says that they were amazed at his understanding. But Mary and Joseph didn't get the understanding because uh, they did not tarry. God. Too many of us are leaving the presence of God because we will not wait to hear the message or the, the, the wisdom that comes from the heart of God. We, 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 are, we are leaving before God speaks. God. And what I want to say is that there is power and there is, there is wisdom and understanding and knowledge in prayer. When I stay in the presence of God, God gives me peace and then he begins to give me strategies. And so we will shed one tear and get up. But what I want to say is keep on crying, my God, until God speaks. Keep on worshiping until God God speaks. Worship, watch this, worship will set your heart in the right place. Worship uh, will help you treat your wife right. Worship will, will, will learn, will teach us how to, to submit to our husbands and to our wives. Worship will teach us how to speak to our children when they get on our nerves. Worship, my God, will teach us how to submit to authority. Worship will, will teach us how to treat our co-workers right. Worship will teach us how to stop being insecure and know that we are fearful and wonderfully made. Worship will give us answers. My God, worship will give us solutions. But you got to stay and tarry. Tarry. What, what are you saying, Terry? I'm saying expect something. My God. I mean, and Sister Danette was talking before we came on about how when we come into worship, you can tell who has came expecting <laughs> and who just came just to see a show see if I come my God expecting I, I I'm not looking at everybody else I'm I'm coming focused and engaged with the presence of God and so he tarried there and then they uh, begin to look for Jesus and the Bible says that they begin to ask around to their acquaintances and the family members, have you seen Jesus? You ain't, have you seen him? You ain't seen, where, where is he at? The Bible says they assumed that he was in their presence. Can I help you? Stop assuming that he's there. God, glory be to God. Stop assuming that he's there. Stop, stop assuming that he's in the place where you used to be. Oh, shot that up, go shot But I need to be, glory be to God, sensitive to where the Spirit of God is. He, he, he may have moved, glory be to God, or, watch it, or he may have stayed. Come on, somebody. And I'm saying that we got to be sensitive to where the Spirit of God is and stop assuming just because everybody else is moving in that direction that that's where Jesus is. Oh, my God. Uh, maybe that's the way that they do their worship, but that does not mean that's the way that you need to begin to do your worship. I I need to know where is God at for me. Glory be to God. And they assumed that he was there. Glory be to God. But he stayed in the holy place. There's a, a story uh, in Judges 16 and about, about a man named uh, a Samson. And I'm sure that you are very familiar uh, with this story. And uh, the Bible says that, uh, that he had his head in the hands of the enemy. He had his head in the hands of Delilah, a beautiful woman who was, was also a Philistine. And the Bible says that as he fell asleep with his head in her hand, that she said, wake up, uh, Samson, because the Philistines is upon you. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. Watch this. And he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. He had his head in the enemy's hands. And he told her where his strength came from. His, his strength came from his hair. He was a Nazarite, not a Nazarene, but a Nazarite. And, and a Nazarite had a contract, um, had a covenant with God that, that, that my covenant is that I will not cut my hair. And with Samson, his power, his supernatural power came as a result of him keeping his covenant. But when he shared to the 
enemy where his power, where his strength came from. Here it is. She cut it off. Glory be to God. And so what the enemy is doing is trying to figure out, maneuver and figure out, find out where is your supernatural power coming from? Because I had people talk about you, but it didn't fade you. Uh, I had people lie on you, but it didn't disrupt you. I'm trying to figure out if I take away the job, why is it that you still have your joy? I'm, I'm trying to figure out when the business doesn't work, glory be to God, how is it that you're still able to praise? And he's trying to figure out, glory be to God, where your strength is coming from. What I want to tell you to do is keep your head out of the enemy's head. My God. Because what he wants to do is separate you from the covenant that you have with God. And so what he has done is separated, here it is, us from the church. Glory be to God. Us from the Holy Land. Because he understands you know that when I go to church, I get better. When I go to church, I feel better. When I go to church, I have a better perception. And what he has done is try to get your head in his hand. My God. So that if I get your head in my hand, I'm able to tear apart everything that is in your mind. Glory be to God. I'll take away your vault of that Jesus is good. I'll take away the vault that God is holy and that he is acceptable of my praise. I, I take away your worship, your death. I take away your ministry. I take away your song. I take away your preaching. But I come to tell somebody today that God wants to give it to you back. God wants you to come back to your first love. Oh, The Bible says that when they realized that Jesus was not in the camp, they turn back around. Glory be to God. I want to tell somebody today, tonight, this morning, whenever you see this, it is your time, this is your hour to turn back around. Glory be to God. Mary and Joseph realized that God, that Jesus was not in our presence. He is not in the midst. So what is the solution? Here it is. Let's turn back around. <laughs> Can I tell you, it's that easy. Too many of us are trying to stop drinking. We're trying to stop fornicating. And all God is saying is just come back to me. And then Jesus said to Mary, he said, how is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I would be about my father's business? The Bible says that they were looking for him and sorrowful. And the only reason why they were sorrowful is because they were looking for him in the wrong place. Can I tell you, you're looking for him in the club. That's the wrong place. You're looking for him in wrong relationships. That's the wrong place. You're looking for him with alcohol. But that's the wrong place. He said, how is it that you didn't know where I would be at? Can I tell you where he's at? He's right where you left him. He's in your worship. He's in raising your hand. He's in the stop. He's in your hallelujah. He's in praise the Lord. He's in God is worthy. Can I tell you? It's time to go back. It's not hard to find them. Just go back to where you left them. I come to tell somebody we left him but we can go back and get him. Hallelujah. Right where you're at, that's a good time to shout. That's a good time to clap your hands because I made up my mind. Here it is. I'm going back. Oh, shata. I want to talk to somebody for the next couple of minutes that you are coming back. All I have to do is make up my mind that I'm not going to allow anything to keep me on the path that I've been. But I'm turning around. Glory be to God. And I'm going back to where I know I can find Jesus. You can find Jesus in prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says that he, he, uh, he lives or he dwells. He inhabits the praise of his people. 
And so if I want to find Jesus, I can find him in praise. Hallelujah. Uh, those of you, God said right now, there's a mother in here that's waiting for your child to come back. Hallelujah. And God said, praise me, my God, and I'll show up. Oh, shut up. Oh, go stop. Here it is. He says, your praise is not going to only usher me. Here it is. I don't know who this is, but somebody is going to find that when you're praising here, God says somebody's getting ready to get a phone call from their child. Somebody else, your child is getting ready to show up in the next 30 minutes with a knock on the door. Glory be to God. He says, I'm going to show up. Hallelujah. And they're going to show up too. Here it is. Because you lifted me up. Now I'm going to draw them. Hallelujah. If you lift me up, glory be to God, I'll do the drawing. Hallelujah. People of God, we left something. We left something. Something that's, that's critical in, in, in having a true successful life. And that's our relationship, our dedication to Jesus Christ. Some of us are getting so caught up in ministry that we, call, we forgot the one who called us into the ministry. You've you, you gotten so good at preaching. you got so good at, 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 uh, at managing. You've gotten so good at, at starting new jobs. And, and you got so good at singing and dancing and everything that you do that you forgot the one who called you into it. Can I tell you that it's time for us to go back? It's time for us to go back to our first love and say, God, I, I left something. And the, the anointing isn't as strong as it used to be. I left something. My passion for you and my passion for people is not like it used to be. I left something. I want to pray with you right where you are. Father God, forgive us for leaving you. Forgive us for leaving that prayer life. God, bring us back. Today we're going to turn around and go back to where we know you are. And that is in the house of God. That is in the presence of God. That is in the Holy Land. And God, we pray, Lord Father, as we get there, that we'll receive divine answers, divine connections. And we give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your life on today and allowing me to minister the word of God into your hearts. I pray that you receive something and, and I pray that you will let somebody know this is a word that you need to hear. It, it ministered to me and I pray that it ministers to you. Again, my name is Pastor Tim Red here at WTJR. Pastor Speaks. Have a great day. God bless. Christian Television Network.